What's up guys, Justin here with thecharacteressentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how we can take our character creator models and export them to Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you wanna give character creator a try, you can do that by visiting thecharacteressentials.com slash character creator. Note that that is an affiliate link, meaning that I would receive a commission if you do end up purchasing through that link. But let's go ahead and just jump into this. All right, so in this case, I've got a version of the Camilla character that I want to export from character creator to blender and so we can do that using two things we can use the export function in character creator as well as um, the add-on for blender that's been developed by character creator to bring these models in so first off let's talk about the export so what we want to do is we want to take this model and we want to do a file export and in this case I'm going to export this to an FBX file and specifically I want to export all and at the moment I don't really have any like crazy animations applied to this or anything like that so we're not going to worry too much about that for right now we can talk about things like that in a future video but what I want to do is I just want to do a file export I want to export an FBX file and I want to select the option for all and so when I do that what that's going to do is that's going to give me a number of different options in here. And so specifically, we want to start by clicking on this drop down and picking the option for Blender. So we want to bring this into Blender. And there's different options in here. You can export just the mesh, you can export the mesh and motion, or you can export just the motion. In this case, we're gonna pick mesh and motion. Um, we don't really have any motions applied here, um, but that is going to include those motion animations if you have them. And so a couple other things in your settings, right? First off, you wanna uncheck the box for embed textures. Um, we don't wanna do that when we are exporting. And then I'm also, in this case, I'm just gonna export the current pose. Um, you can also export different poses um, in the custom option right here. So we can dive into that in a future video. So let's go ahead and let's just get a model over into Blender for right now. The other thing that you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you merge beard and brows into one object down below like this. And then once you're done, what you can do is you can click on the option for export. And when you do that, and so you can't import it back into Character Creator if you change some of these options right here. So just be aware of that. Um, we're not bringing it back in right now, so no big deal. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on okay. And then you just want to um, name your model. In this case, I've named it Camilla Test and already export it. But then you wanna click on save. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna save the model as an FBX file that you can then bring into Blender. Okay, and so the next step is you need to install the Blender add-on. So you can click on this option right here for download auto setup, and that's just gonna bring you down here um, to an option where you can download the file. And so that's gonna take you to this post right here, um, which is basically going to link you to a page on GitHub where you can download the plugin. So I'm clicking on the character creator for Blender Tools plugin. If you wanna see more about that, you can click on it right here. But in this case, I've tried the EXE file and it actually didn't work on my computer. I think it's because I don't have Blender installed on my main hard drive. I have it installed on an external hard drive. Um, so what I did is I just downloaded this source code file right here. And so when you download the source code file, that's basically an add-on that you can install directly in Blender. So what you could do is then jump over into Blender and under edit, preferences, you want to install that zip file. Don't unzip it, just um, find the zip file and link to it. So click on install and install that. And what that's gonna do is that's going to basically give you this menu right here that does the automatic import and material setup of the character creator and iClone characters. Now there's some things in here that you can kind of mess around with, right? Like the target renderer, um, the different kinds of materials that are in here. We're not going to worry too much about this right now. Um, it pretty much it works pretty well um, without you having to mess with any of this stuff, but there are options in here if you want them. Um, but when, when you do that, what that's gonna do is that's going to add this as a little menu on the right hand side. You can tap the N letter on your keyboard in order to pop that up. And so specifically, you wanna click on the CC slash IC pipeline, the character creator and iClone pipeline. 
Notice what that's gonna do is so that's gonna give you the option to import different things, right? So you can import wrinkles, lighting, physics, and then you can also automatically rigify the character, which we can talk about in a future video. But for now, let's just bring in the lighting of our character and our character. So to do that, what I can do is I can just click on the option to import character. And then you wanna go find your FBX file. So in this case, right, I've got a Camilla test file. If I double click on that, that's going to import this character and automatically set it up in Blender. And so notice how I'm in Blender 3.6. This is currently working in version 3.6 right now. There we go. And you can see that it did exactly what it sounded like it was going to do. It imported my character. It automatically set up my materials. So notice how those actually look really good. Um, they look a lot better than like when you bring in Mixamo files or something like that, that look like they're made of, uh, they look like they're like soaking wet or something like that. This actually does a pretty good job of bringing in these materials. Now, one thing that you might do in order to see your character is just go up into your viewport overlay is it just toggle off bones. The other thing is it brings in these dummy files. I'm not sure what these are for. They just kind of get in the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete them out. They might be in here for a reason that I don't know about, but for right now, we're gonna delete them out. But now, if we zoom in and take a look at this character, you can see how it brought her in with the different skin settings set up, um, the clothes set up, other things like that. And so it did a really good job of setting this up. And notice how it also brought in the lighting settings. And so if I toggle over into Eevee and I look at this, this actually looks really good with the lighting that's in this scene. So I'm pretty happy with the way that it did that. And so notice how when you bring this in, you can set this so that it builds your materials either for EV or for cycles using these buttons right here. Um, but notice how when it creates these, and we're gonna jump over into our shader editor really quick, but notice how it creates either simple or advanced node setups in here. So if I tap the N key up here and I'm just gonna scroll down, notice how you can actually use this to rebuild the nodes, depending on if you want them to be basic. If I click here, notice how it'll rebuild those materials into the basic PBR setup or the advanced setup right here. Now, one thing that's interesting to me, and this is probably because I changed the diffuse material of the model over in Character Creator, but notice how when I have the basic materials, I actually lose those colors in here. That's probably having to do with the way that I set those materials up, but notice how this comes through and it'll automatically rebuild the advanced materials inside a blender like this, um, depending on which one of those you select. So you can also come in here and adjust the parameters of the materials down below. So if you don't wanna get into the shaders, right, you can just kind of scroll down into your material parameters and you can make adjustments to things like the metallic, um, the specularity of the material, the roughness, um, other things like that. So you can make changes to your materials in here just by using your sliders, right? So you can see I can make this material more shiny if I decide I want to do that. There's just a ton of stuff that we can do in here. And so there are other things in here as well so there's things like the ability to open and close the eyes using this slider right here, which is actually pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that's rigged up, but you do have that ability. Now, currently with the way that I have the model set up, the open mouth function does not work, um, but that's something we can definitely take a look at in the future. We're not gonna worry too much about the rigging for right now. And then down below there's options for the different scene lighting, which is actually really cool. So I'm gonna jump over into Eevee really quick. This actually brings in um, several different lighting setups and notice what this is doing. So this is kind of swapping between them. Now, I'm not sure if this is something where you can add additional lighting setups over in Character Creator and bring those in, um, but just having the ability to jump between these, um, if you wanna render at your character is actually really cool as well. And so say that you wanted to bring in a character that had an animation applied to it or um, a motion applied to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this Caleb character and we'll bring him in and we'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and we'll throw a hairstyle on him real quick. But let's say that we wanted him to have an animation. So we'll go with motion right here and we'll just add this relaxed walk to this character. So now if I animate this like this, right? Notice how he has a walk 
associated with him. So he has a movement associated with his walk. Well, let's say that we were to export that. We're gonna to go to export FBX all. And we'll go ahead and we'll just export this with the current animation. Um, we're gonna go ahead and leave all the other settings kind of the same. We're gonna click on export. We're gonna click on okay. And I can't remember his name. So we're gonna call him Steve. And so we'll jump over into Blender and for whatever reason, oh, probably because I didn't save my preferences. This isn't in here, so we wanna make sure that we've enabled character creator tools. And in this case, we want the pipeline. We wanna import character and we'll bring Steve in like this. And we'll go ahead and we'll toggle these bones off and it's gonna take a minute to compile the shaders. And we didn't bring the lighting in or anything like that, which is fine. Um, but notice how this character, if we were to click on play, actually came in with that walk animation associated with them like this. So he's actually going to walk in 3D and you can adjust the speed and other things like that, but you can see how bringing that animation in was actually really easy. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. We can get more in depth on some other things um, when you bring these into Blender, but in general, this is how you can get started bringing in character creator files to start working with them. Leave a comment below. Let me know what other kinds of tutorials you'd like to see on this workflow. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you do want to check out character creator, I will link to it on this page as well. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.